sandwiches, ice cream, coffee and snacks, and many other pleasing treats. Our foods are fresh and tasty, our drinks satisfying and refreshing. They're so good. Welcome to Average Joe's Drive-In. And now, on with the show. Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 84 of Average Joe's Drive-In. And with me this week is a very special guest. You may have seen him in such films as House Shark, Night of Something Strange, She Kills, and he is also in the upcoming Johnny Z. Won't you all welcome Michael Merchant. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for having me, TJ. Hey, no problem. I uh, I happened to see House Shark a few weeks ago. I picked it up because I... I Somehow got onto the whole Instagram thing, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and, and uh, with How Shark, and started following it. And I was, I picked it up, and and I had a blast with it. I thought it was it was a lot of oh, fun. You. And uh, you know, I happened to come across you on Twitter, so I said, "What the hell? Let's give it a shot." And here we yep. are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Instagram and uh, Twitter, pretty amazing how it brings everybody together. Yeah, I um. You know, I, as much as I have opinions about social media in general, there are awesome things that come oh, from yeah. it. So it's not all bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, you've been you've been acting for a little while. You kind of bit, got the bug early on, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you came about being an actor? Sure. Um, well, from a young age, I was really into movies. Um, one of my earliest memories is actually uh, when I was around three or four, I fell off a slide and broke my femur in half. And uh, so I was in the hospital for quite some time. And one of the things that um, I remember va- um, very vividly was uh, watching Wizard of Oz on repeat, like over and over again, because it was the only VHS tape that they had at the hospital. Um, so... Uh, I was always just happy about that. It, it kind of got me away, you know, from the pain and everything. Um, you don't think you remember much at three or four, but I can remember the pain. <laughs> so, um, you know, as I got older and things, I just became more and more attached to movies and media in general. Um, and I always knew I wanted to kind of like return the favor, um, and act myself and give people some of that relief from their their, their lives as well. Um, so I just started goofing around, memorizing lines from movies that I loved, and uh, eventually, you know, going through school and uh, acting in, you know, the typical high school plays, things like that. And um, my grandmother found an article um, in the newspaper for an audition for this movie called Big Fish in Middlesex, which was uh, Jonathan Strayton's first feature film. And I was around 14 or 15 at this time, and um, I just auditioned and got the part of his brother. And uh, we became pretty good friends at that point. Uh, he was a little bit older than I was, but, um, you know, we, he, I kind of looked up to him as like a bigger brother by the end of it, even though uh, my my part was short because I always wanted to be in movies and he was doing what I wanted to do. So, um, you know, I wanted to be around him as much as possible. And then after that, um, I went to college and studied theater um, as a minor and communication studies for my major uh, just to kind of have a backup plan, you know, not rely 100% on theater working out Um, and eventually got eight years uh, running role um, at a haunted dinner theater in Williamsburg. So I did that for quite a while and worked on the side with Jonathan for two plates, just a real quick pickup role. But um, his first, I would say, major um, movie was Night of Something Strange, and he contacted me saying, you know, can I audition for a part, and uh, got the role, and from then on, I met producers for that, and uh, they were directors as well, so just kind of started the ball rolling uh, with Night of Something Strange to be more serious about it. So I got She Kills, uh, Amityville Death House, uh, Empire State of the Dead, uh, Science Team, you know, just goes on and on uh, at this point. 
Uh, so that's kind of how I started out was just a newspaper article, really uh, got hooked up with Jonathan and then went from there. Yeah, it's, it's always strange how sometimes like that one thing just ends up, you know, and it may not be instantaneous, but somehow ends up snowballing into so much more because you happen to click with somebody and it just, you know, I, I've had that happen a lot in in my musical career or even writing or, you know, other things. It, it seems to always somewhere down the line leads to something else. And it just, it, it's, it's kind of a cool thing. Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't, it, and, and it doesn't happen. You know, I think a lot of people think that sort of thing just happens all the time, but it's, it's, it's a lot rarer than people think, right. yeah. <laughs> you know, as far as when you really make when you really make that type of connection where it, you know, it, it goes off. So yeah, that's very cool. That's very cool though that that's led to you know all this other stuff and you know through through the different producers and whatever. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's. I always like to say, you know, just be nice to everyone you meet because you <laughs> you never know, you know, who they know uh, and you know, what they want to do for you and if they like you, you know, it's it can just lead to a lot of good things and a lot of good friends. I've made a lot of good friends throughout the years and really appreciative of my grandma <laughs> finding that <laughs> that newspaper article. Good old grandma yeah. finding you know <laughs> helping out and setting you on the path. Yeah. Yeah, I I had heard an old saying one time and it's always stuck with me. It's like be careful who you piss off on the way to the top yes. because you're going to go buy them on the way down. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've always I've always personally tried to, you know, try to live by that motto of just, you know, it's uh I have a, you know, I have a tattoo on my arm that's basically do unto others as you wish to have done to you, mm -hmm. in, you know, in in a roundabout sort of way. And that's something I've always always lived about. If you treat me decent, I'll treat you decent. But just being a decent human being goes a long oh, way. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> it definitely does. I mean, there's at this day and age, I mean, there's no point in being mean to anybody. So, <laughs> you know, it's... No, no, exactly. Nobody, I, I feel deep down inside, nobody really wants to do anything negative to you. So why do it to them? Oh, exactly. Exactly. And I think it's just, it's, Personally, like, it's a, it, like I said, very similar to how I feel about life in general. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, you know, stick with that that same thing because it's just like there's too much negativity anyway. So why not, you know, why make more? Exactly. But, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've got a project you're currently working on mm -hmm. called called Johnny Z, and I know you can't talk about a lot of stuff. With that, there's certain things or whatever, but uh, you know, could you tell me, tell us a little bit about it and what it's, you know, what it's all about, what you can talk about? Sure, sure. Um, so basically, Johnny C is the story of um, this evil corporation called Nordak, and um, they're kind of in charge of the. Uh, it's as, well. The, let me start off by saying the movie is the zombie apocalypse. Um, so. There's a, a virus going around, and this company, Nordak, has the kind of like a vaccine suppressor um, type of drug that they use uh, to keep people at bay. Uh, but there are zombies that are running around as well. Um, and the character, Johnny, is, a, um, is the patient Z uh, for this um, outbreak, and they... They use his blood as the um, the vaccine, and um, you know that's kind of starts the journey for him. Um, he's tortured in the process of getting this this vaccine, and um, the doctors, you know, kind of feel bad for him. So there's a way that he escapes, and um, he's captured by this zombie hunter named John Ray, and um, he finds out, or John Ray finds out that Johnny Z is um, a little bit more than your average zombie. Like, he can retain knowledge and learn, um, whereas other zombies are just kind of like your stereotypical zombie. They just run around hungry for brains and guts. And uh, But this one is a little bit different. So he begins to train him in uh, martial arts, which is a Filipino martial arts, Kali, 
Um, and John Ray, who's played by Felix Cortez, is actually a um, a Tuhan, which is a, a master of this martial arts form, and he's been practicing for. I believe over 40 years, and uh, so he's been training me actually on the side um, on the weekends for this role, and uh, because Johnny needs to learn these martial arts moves to kind of get revenge on the the corporation that's wronged him throughout his whole life, um, and it, there's a lot more of a, a drama element to it. Uh, there's things that the character John Ray is struggling with um, that I don't want to <laughs> say too much, but he has kind of right. like a, a PTSD and, um, you know, really hates zombies and, you know, has kind of almost become like a savior of, of his local area. And um, so they kind of team up and work together to try and get back at this corporation that's done the area wrong. So it's, it's, a, it's a little bit more than, you know, just the – Jonathan does a lot of comedies. This one has comedy elements into it, but it's it's definitely much more serious and um, direct uh, type of movie than we've done before. It, it it definitely just from what you're talking about sounds like a very different take on the whole zombie thing, which you know a lot of people have said is played out. But there's always room for something new and cool when it comes to zombies, yeah, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it's like vampires, werewolves, anything like that. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of all that stuff, so if something is really good, genuinely good, I'm, I am down, completely down for it. Yeah, I, so I, I, I think people will enjoy it. It's, um... Like you said, it's it's going to be a little bit different take. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of martial arts with martial arts movies with zombies involved, and uh, definitely not a zombie doing the martial arts as well. <laughs> so <laughs> no, no, that's yeah, that is definitely a definitely a different take on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's uh, so you know, like I said, like I was saying in the introduction, I kind of I kind of found out about you through the movie House Shark. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I had a blast. I had a blast with that. And so, you know, how did uh, – was was that something that you kind of came into because of working on uh, Night of Something Strange? Um, in a – yes, in a way. Uh, <laughs> so basically um, the director of Howl Shark, Ron Bonk, is the, was the producer for Night of Something Strange. And I had worked with – them on that project first and then um he went on to direct she kills and i was in that one as well um i auditioned for ron and he really liked what i was doing with the character so he went ahead and uh, cast me in that and then since then we've been working together he's been writing roles that are you know for suited for us um a lot of the the cast in house shark is returning from she kills the night of something strange um so it's kind of just a, a team collaboration that we do. So those characters were written with us in mind. Yeah, I was going to say, that's one thing from watching that movie. You guys had a really good chemistry together, mm-hmm. and it seemed like you were having a good time while you are filming. Yeah. <laughs> which, which I, you know, that's one thing that I think the, the view, uh, you know, the average viewer notices a lot when, Especially when it comes to something with this that's that's so comedy heavy, right? You you know you can kind of tell I think sometimes when the people aren't having a good time doing mm. it because the performances aren't quite there. And as far as I'm concerned, you guys nailed it, 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 it. When when it comes to that, because I laughed my ass off the whole time, and it was it was a good time. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, how now, how did you... Now, your character's got a little bit... I don't want to spoil anything for the people who haven't seen House Shark yet, but uh, your character goes through a little bit of a transition towards the end of it. Yeah. Where, <laughs> so, so, was that... Uh, you know, how hard was it to go through the, the two... The, you know, doing the transitions because of the, the, the way that character's played off in between, you know, those two things. I know it's very similar, but at the same time, it does change because of what's revealed and all that. Right. So, was is, is that was that like a mindset thing for you to kind of switch between the two, or was it just something natural for you to flip between the two? Um, I mean, it comes, I think, to me pretty naturally. I 
constantly annoy my girlfriend and other people by going into characters and sometimes I do it a bit too much so uh, this was kind of just me being able to pull one of the characters out and be him for the first half and then the second half kind of be almost like a little bit more myself um, which I don't typically do um, <laughs> right. so uh, you know it, it was fun getting to do a range, you know, of different stuff because, you know, Night is Something Strange, it was just bully, 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 bully. And then uh, She Kills, it was kind of more of like the badass gang member. Um, and there's no real change in the in the characters. But in this one, um, because of the reveal, uh, you know, it, it was fun getting to play both styles. Yeah, that, and and I like that you know aspect of it that it wasn't just because it kind of didn't I wasn't expecting that mm-hmm. so <laughs> it was kind of neat when it did it it was it just brought a whole other element to what was going on and and like I said I really I really enjoyed that yeah. <laughs> a lot as far as like I said I I was laughing my ass off the whole time I I bought it because I bought it you know it, for those of you who haven't seen how shark it, it is available at Walmart's everywhere yeah uh, that's where I picked it up it's only uh, and, like nine ninety six at Walmart so it's and it's absolutely absolutely worth it if you're a horror fan if you're a genre fan if you love Jaws in other related movies you definitely need to buy it because you'll laugh your ass off because it's 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 a very unique film. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's a very u- it's a very unique film in, in a very wonderfully awesome way because I you know I'm a fan of all kinds of different movies and not every film can pull something like that off and have it work and you guys did it beautifully. So thank you. yeah, I, I think that comes a lot from Ron. Uh, he is a huge fan of Jaws, like. He he will watch it anytime it comes on, no matter how many times he's seen it. And oh, that would uh, be me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's just has such a passion for it that he's always wanted to make a, a shark movie, and you know, now is like the perfect chance. And it's basically just Jaws, but in a house, <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's different. Yeah, but it's but like I said, it's a good difference. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> um. Um, yeah, Dur, I was gonna the uh, yeah, the acting thing, man, I'll tell you, it it's it if you enjoy doing it, you love film and all that stuff. Like I I did a few like s- small things with some of my friends and whatever and I always thought it was fun, but I recently have one of my short stories is being adapted into a film and I oh, got awesome. to do a cameo with it cameo in it and I was like, man, I forgot how much I enjoyed doing that because I, you know, did a little bit of acting in school and stuff like that, and I always liked it. I just never pursued it. My path led me to music first, you know, and then I did the band thing for years, and then it's just weird how 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 sometimes you come back to stuff. Oh, and, yeah. You know, the, the first loves and passions, like for me, was always writing. I, I always wrote stories when I was a kid. It took me... You know, 12 years, 13, 14 years to get back into it. But, you know, hey, six novels later and working on a seventh, you know, short story collection. And That's so awesome. It's, it's, it's weird, but it, it, it's good. I always love talking to people who pursue what they're passionate about. You seem to be pursuing one of the things you're passionate about. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I try, you know, use all my vacation and stuff to make these films and uh anytime i can get out onto somebody's set and help out you know it's just i love doing it so oh yeah it, it, it's it's fun it, and it's it's really cool because i had never really been on like a, a set so much with like a full cast and all that until just recently like i said when i did my cameo and i was like man this is awesome mm-hmm. this is really cool i actually have a script for this <laughs> and it's not just off the cuff and Wow, I gotta memorize some lines and do it in front of a crowd of people, and you know, making sure I'm hitting my marks. And I was like, wow, I was like, it's kind of nerve wracking, but really fun at the same time. So it's 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 a good adrenaline rush. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it can so be you, it can be uh, a roller coaster. <laughs> especially, you know, I, I can I can see too, like it's 
when you're playing like a more dramatic role and having to get into those characters and things like that, it's got, definitely going to be a little bit more emotionally draining mm-hmm. on that side because you got to put yourself in that type of mindset, you know, and and everything. I was lucky the little role I did was kind of comical, so it was it's for a flashback sequence, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so it was kind of a comical bit. But it was, it was fun, you know, but I got to get into my character, and I kind of had an idea, and if I don't want to give away what I base the character on, but I'm hoping people that are fans of that particular movie will will kind of recognize it. But we'll awesome. Have to, <laughs> have to see how it goes. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, so how long actually have you been, wh- how long ago did you do your first film that was actually, how old were you? Um, I was around 14. Okay. And I am 31 now, so... So you you stuck with it for quite a while, then. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in uh, one form or another. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> oh, it always takes... It takes on many forms. It's like any artistic, you know, endeavor that you do. There's always various forms of... There's different iterations of it. Exactly, so, yeah. So, but... You know, and I think if you stick with it and you're passionate about it, eventually you're going to get to at least a point that you're happy with what you're doing. And But, you know, you always strive for more, and you're always striving to take it to the next level. I think that's just the creative, and anybody that's creative, that's the, that creative aspect and the drive. Yeah, and you always want to do, like, at least a step better the next time, you know. I Oh, yeah. It's hard looking back at, you know... Yeah, basically, like, uh, I mean, there's some times where I still watch her performance, even as new as Howl Shark, and I look back and I'm like, oh, I just wish I made a uh, a different choice with the the dialogue, but, um, you know, I'll keep it in the Rolodex for next time. <laughs> oh, I, you know, as an, as an artist, like, especially, you know, as, as you grow and progress, I know, like, I look back at some of the, some of the early recordings that my bands did or whatever and going, boy, <laughs> that was really bad. I should have done this. I should have done A, B, and C. But, right. you know, it's recognizing those things, learning from them, and then improving is what, you know, gets you to where you want to go. And exactly. I think that's the biggest thing. And a lot of times, you know, those little things that we as artists find annoying are the things that other people find endearing. So, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Sometimes there's perfection and imperfection, I guess, you know. Very true. So you're also into, uh, you said you're into gaming and you do a Twitch stream? Uh, I ten- attempt to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, I am a huge gamer and uh, been gaming ever since I was little. And uh, I started doing Twitch to uh, just kind of record the footage um, and off the PlayStation 4. Um, so I used to do it natively through the system itself uh, just to kind of be able to look back or show people things that I was talking about. Um, but then it just kind of became a, a second passion where anytime I'm gaming that's on a console, I can stream it and I'll just stream it and talk to the people that come in if anybody comes in and, uh, you know, just go from there. But it's it's a lot of fun. to It's a new level to gaming because you get to interact even in single player games with other people. Yeah, I have a I have a few friends that that do that and they they really enjoy it. Me, I'm not big on talking to a lot of people when I'm gaming because <laughs> yeah, I get I get too annoyed with negative attitudes and really shitty people. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I uh, you know I'm a I've, I'm a I'm a gamer as well. I've I've been gaming forever, and uh, you know I I do a lot of PC gaming these days. I do have a PS4, but um, I've been doing a lot of PC gaming. So right now I I just uh, did a LAN party with a bunch of my buddies the other day, doing old school and uh, doing some. We did uh, Warhammer and um, Wildland, uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon oh, Wildlands. Awesome. And um, there's a For Honors a game we've been playing a lot when we actually can get together. But, you know, I'm really into the open world stuff, like mm-hmm. like Fallout, uh, Skyrim, you know, stuff like that. That, is, oh, yeah. uh, that I absolutely love. I am uh, extremely excited for Fallout 76. Uh, is that anything you are into? Oh, yeah. I, I will be picking that up day one probably. Yeah. 
I now now I'm curious because I you know I I love Bethesda right to death because they put out some awesome games, but their mm-hmm. games are so glitchy when they first come out that I kind of yeah. almost hesitate to buy stuff day one from them because you deal with two months of glitches, but it's almost worth it because Fallout's like. Fallout 4, I will be honest, is probably my favorite game ever. I have more time in on that game than anything because, mm-hmm. to me, it was the perfect blend between action-adventure and, like, that Sims-style create-a-world type stuff. Yeah, I um, unfortunately, I've only played maybe about an hour or two hours of Fallout 4. Um, just I have a really bad habit of buying games and never finishing them. I, might, uh, you would, you, I can relate to that. If you ever looked at my Steam library, oh, yeah, I have about 120 worst. games in there, and I've only played about 40 of them. So. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I know exactly what you mean. I And it, it's easier now that I've streamed, or actually it's worse because – you kind of go with the flow of the trend of what people are playing, and you also kind of want to not play the same game everybody else is playing. So it's kind of like you're a week behind maybe where people are still interested in it, um, where you play like really small indie games. Um, So like, uh, you know, I I buy so many things that are on sale and I play them for like a week and then move on to the next thing. But Fallout 4 is definitely one I want to get back to. It, it's one of those, like, it's such a time-consuming game once you get yeah. going with it because yeah. it just sucks you in and you're like, i got to do this. I need to work on my settlement some more. I spend yeah. more time building crap than I do adventuring half the time. You know? <laughs> I yep. think I've, I've played it through, I'm on my third or fourth playthrough. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And I don't ever replay games that much, like that type of game where I play it through. Usually I'm pretty much one and done with anything, especially longer games like that. Um, yeah. You know, what's some what's some games you've been into lately? Um, well, I've been playing, uh, I just started playing Bloodborne. Um, I like the, the Souls-type games, um, even though Bloodborne is really difficult. <laughs> but I, I like it. Um, and then I've been playing uh, Valkyria Chronicles, um, it's a strategy strategy game. I really like strategy games as well. Um, so I'm waiting for the the fourth one to come out, which should be later this month. And I picked up Dragon Quest Eleven today. haven't haven't started it yet, but I'll be playing that all, pretty much all this week. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, Monster Hunter World. I've been playing a lot. Now that looks really interesting. Like that's one I really want to check out. Yeah, it, it's I love it. It's awesome. Um, you know, I've got I'm still my time is still limited these days. That it's yeah. like, <laughs> so I try not to get too crazy with games. I try to pick like a couple that I know I can that will. I'm pretty sure will have some longevity to them, and mm-hmm. then <laughs> stick with those. And then I'll you know eventually like when a sale comes up, I'll snag some of the other stuff so I have it. You know, I, exactly, I yeah. picked up the whole Bioshock collection a while ago, and I still haven't played any of them. You know, like, I, I have a <laughs> yeah, bunch of Yeah, this one series like I'm, I haven't played myself. I haven't played any of the Bioshocks. I have them, but um, actually, I, well, I don't have Infinite, but I have, I believe, the first two, and I, I haven't touched it. Everybody, everybody I know that's played them has had nothing but good things to say about them, and they're like, dude, yeah. that's going to be right up your alley. You're going to love it play it that it's just every time I get sucked into something else and it's just yep. so I never quite get around to it and then when every time I think I'm going to start playing it something else catches my eye and I decide I'm going to go play that and it's just yep. yeah. I'm the worst at that <laughs> I picked up Titanfall 2 and I love the first Titanfall um, mm-hmm. I picked up Titanfall 2 I think I've maybe played 10 hours on it I haven't opened it in over a year yeah, <laughs> you know, because I got sucked into something else. <laughs> it just... I think I bought uh, the second one on Black Friday when they had a, a sale for it, and I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> yeah, yes, the you know that that's one of the things about the Steam the the you know quarterly Steam sales are just deadly because there's like Ooh, oh yeah. they have this for four bucks and this for three dollars and I just spent fifty dollars and bought forty games. Exactly. You know? yeah. 
There's there's a few like really cool indie games though. There's one that's called The Raft. It's like a survival game that you're on a raft, and I know it sounds really odd, but <laughs> it's it's kind of a crafting survival game where you're on a okay. raft. It's basically Water World. The movie oh, Waterworld, nice. World, yeah, it's really <laughs> weird, but it looks it it's kind of looks like Minecraft, but it okay. but it looks fun as all hell. Like my buddy was showing it to me, it's like I really am thinking about buying that and play, you know, giving it a shot. So yeah, I've only played a few of the the survival games, like uh, Conan Exiles. I played for maybe like ten hours and. Um, Metal Gear Survive, which was not that great, but yeah. it, I, I wanted to get through it as much as possible because I didn't want to feel like I wasted the money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I, that's yeah, but, that's that's the problem, especially when you're paying like full price for stuff or close yeah. to full price. I hate to not play it because I'm always like, I just spent thirty or forty dollars on this. I really probably should play it for more than two hours and give it a chance. Yeah. You know. Yep. So. <laughs> But the, I kind of equate it to like a, a a price per hour. Like Skyrim has excellent value; you can get it for like twenty bucks and play it for hundreds of hours. And he's on the dollar. To. <laughs> exactly, and so it's kind of that idea um, where you know if I feel like I'll get more hours out of it than a, the price of like a movie ticket an hour, then I'll say yeah, why not? And and that's that's really how I felt when it came to. Fallout because I I've, I've played the Fallout series since way back in the early PC days of the original Fallout. Mm-hmm. I think the only one I haven't played is Tactics. Um, yeah, I don't think I played that one either. Uh, I have played the first one. I beat that, and I'm not sure I I finished the second one, but I know I've played it. I don't think I ever finished the second one. I don't think I ever actually finished either one of the first two. But yeah. <laughs> I finished three, and I love that. So when four and I and I had a blast with New Vegas, and mm-hmm. um, so when four come out, I like perch. I pre ordered that, and I never pre order anything because I was because I loved how they did that game, like, it's all of a sudden, it's just like E3, oh, by the way, um, yeah. in November, you guys are getting a new Fallout game. And, yep. and I love that, because I get, I don't know about you, I'm curious to hear your, your opinion on this, but I hate them announcing games like three years before they ever come out, because by the time they come out, half the time I'm not interested anymore. Yeah, I mean, I think they're getting a little ridiculous with, <laughs> the announcements of games like I'm excited for Cyberpunk uh, 2077. Oh my god, that looks and beautiful! I just saw a trail like the gameplay trailer for that the other day. Mm-hmm. That looks un- unbelievable. Yeah, and <laughs> we're gonna have to wait years for it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's probably two years so, away at least. <laughs> yeah. So, but. Luckily for that one, I don't think there's going to be anything that fills that that genre um, in the meantime. So I was always a, I was always like a huge Shadowrun fan back in the day. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what that reminds me of is, yeah. is Shadowrun. So I'm like I am all about that. That looks cool as hell, and it just looks gorgeous. I'm like I don't think my PC could handle that now, and I have a fairly good gaming computer so yeah i hope i hope mine can run it i'm not sure i'm thinking that's like completely next gen yeah next gen processors but there are some new processors coming out that are ridiculous the new nvidia cards are crazy Mm -hmm. crazy (laughs) i've seen some gameplay footage on those and it's like it's starting to blur the line of where the games are looking so realistic Mm-hmm. Then it's almost hard to tell you're playing a game type deal with some of those yeah. newer ones that I've seen. It's just like that's bonkers to me. But have you ever? Yeah, it's starting to reach that uncanny valley. <laughs> All I can think of is a movie. Have you ever seen the movie Gamer? Gamer, uh, the one with um, Butler. Yeah, and uh, the uh, Michael C. Hall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna get, I saw it on Amazon Prime. Is it, is it gonna, you know, are we getting to, like, that point where it's going to be, yeah. like, that just bonkers level of, uh, of gaming? But that's neither here nor there. But, yeah. the uh, so yeah. VR is getting pretty impressive, and it's not that expensive anymore. Um, like, I, I had the uh, PSVR, 
And there's some really great titles on that. Yeah, I, uh, I just was going to ask you about that. Have you done any of the VR stuff? I tried doing mm-hmm. it with, like, the phone VR stuff, and it was yeah. so glitchy and awkward that it just I couldn't get into it, but... Yeah, I mean, there's a, a few titles on the, the PlayStation virtual reality headset that are uh, pretty amazing. Um, the uh, Until Dawn Carnival, I forget what, what it's called, but... Um, uh, that one's really awesome. It's just like you're riding on a uh, a little roller coaster through a haunted house type deal. And um, I played the the Doom virtual reality one. And um, even though, the, I mean, the biggest gripe with them is they're short. But yeah. um, I, I think they want you to not be that immersed for long, long periods of time. However, they did make uh, Fallout and, well, that one's for PC, but the... Um, Skyrim on PS4 VR. That that's amazing. I that now that's one I really wanted to try out in the VR yeah. because I figured that would be I'm already kind of familiar, you know, I'm familiar with the game. I've beat it. So mm-hmm. I I, yeah, think I mean that it, wouldn't be quite so bad. I think overwhelming, I guess, because I sort of know the game a little bit. Right. I mean, you the just the level of depth of the stuff that they like being able to pick up a book and Instead of just like reading through the pages, you can like put your face in the book. You know, it's like you're you're there in a lower resolution. <laughs> you know, right. but uh, I mean, it's still pretty immersive. It, it, it makes me and it makes me think. I'm curious I'm curious about this because I get your opinion on it. But uh, have you seen Ready Player One yet? I have not. I have no. Not. Okay, then I can't. Nope. I can't discuss that with you because. <laughs> That's basically what, you know, the the movie is about, is getting immersed into this virtual reality world to, mm-hmm. to get away. I mean, I, I'm just curious. I mean, you don't have to have seen the movie to, to, to give me an opinion on this. But do you think that could ever become a problem with, pe- you know, gamers, people that are hardcore gamers especially, getting yes. so immersed in that world that outside real world becomes a secondary function almost, you know? Right. Um, I mean, there's definitely some issues that I, I see with it, um, you know, especially for children. Uh, I think it'll become, you know, a bigger deal for that uh, growing up in that type of environment because, you know, it, it just everything becomes more and more deep diving into your technology. Like, I mean, I didn't grow up on iPhones, but even I'm like, on my phone all the time and you go to a mall or you know a, uh, a restaurant kids are glued to their <laughs> I work on a college campus and, so believe me I, exactly. I see it all the time I almost and, I almost had a kid walk into me today I was standing mm-hmm. still because he was on his phone and not paying any attention right yeah and I mean I'm all for technology I love technology I'll be the first one to go out and buy the newest thing and um, but it's it's kind of like you have to have that balance of self awareness and even I fail at it but I think we you all know do. <laughs> yeah and you know it's just if it gets to that point where it's like you're using it full time to escape and then just coming out of you know to get a uh, you know some food and you know maybe saying hey to your family for like 10 minutes a day <laughs> you know it it might be a little bit too much but um but there's also you know a lot of benefits to it as well that I could think of you know it, it gives a uh, people a chance to in that type of environment um I mean I'm kind of assuming Ready Player One is almost like Sword Art Online I don't know if you've seen that but um, I have not. I'm aware of it but I've never seen it it's basically like a MMO um, RPG, like say World of Warcraft. Everybody's logged into this virtual reality version of it, and they're basically stuck in hospital beds because they're stuck until they either win the game or they die. And if they die in the game, then they die in real life. But the you know in that situation where it's not a life or death situation, you know you can. People that have maybe social anxieties can use it to interact with people more and try to get a little bit more comfortable with engaging but have that kind of shield um, where it's not actually them. They can kind of live a fantasy, um, you know, and hopefully they'll be able to get o- overcome their 
their issues that they have with uh, interacting with people. You know, I would hope that would be one of the perks of being immersed in virtual virtual reality in that respect. And, and I can understand that. I mean, I I'm I'm kind of in a, a weird situation in the fact that I am an introverted extrovert. Like I love being around people and I love doing stuff, mm-hmm. but I also hate being around people at the same time. So oh, yeah, yeah. you know, I have I have times where I I have really bad social anxiety at times, even though I I've, I've been in bands and you know played huge shows and done different things in front of you know crowds and having to deal with thousands of people and this and that it's it, to me that's a different situation than like you know we would everybody I guess never assume like when I played shows as soon as we get off stage I would go to our merch table and sell merch that way I could talk to people one on one but I didn't have to deal with a huge crowd at once right. it's kind of a weird thing so I can understand why that is an attractive might be an attractive option for people with you know the social anxiety issues and stuff because it, and, because it does give you a chance to interact and not be just stuck in your home or whatever, or and maybe mm-hmm. make some friends and maybe it will help you break you out of your shell a little bit at the same time. But it's not so much even being broken out of your shell when you have those ex, you know those anxieties. It's just a it's an irrational fear. That's why it's an anxiety and not a, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. So so yeah, I, mean, I agree. I, I, I get your so. point there definitely. Yeah, and I I know people that have used MMOs, you know, before, you know, they'll be in a guild or something, and then they'll do, like, a guild meetup every year, you know, it kind of gives them the chance to see the person behind the computer, and it, you know, once you've played the game with them so long, you kind of feel like they're your friend already, so, you know, it makes it a little bit easier to to get out and actually talk to people, um, you know, if you have that problem, and... You know, I, I'm actually a very shy person. If I don't know people, uh, I don't really engage in conversation. But that's kind of why I like acting a lot, because I get to act like I am. You know, I get to act like I'm some crazy house shark expert for <laughs> two hours, you know. And people come up to me and like, you're absolutely nothing like how you act. <laughs> I think, I'm like, that's acting. I, I think I find a lot of my, you know, I have a lot of friends who, that are musicians and and actors and, you know, writers and different stuff. And I will be honest, nine out of ten of those people are pretty laid back and shy in real life. They're Mm not the in-your-face, like, and and I've told the story on the show before, but, you know, like, when I was on stage doing shows, I was, that was a completely different person than who I am in real life. Exactly. I think people don't realize that all the time. You know, they expect that same person that's on the screen or on the stage to come down and talk to them as if they were that same person. But, you know, like you said, most of the time that's just not the case. You know, you have somebody come up to you after a show. You know, one time, I and I think I was just talking about this recently, but I'm going to talk about it again and people can fast forward if they've already heard the story. <laughs> but, uh, you know, was... I had I had this girl come up to me after a show and she said, "My friend really wants to tell you that you that you guys are awesome and in, in, you know in some other stuff." And I was like, "Well, why does she come over and and uh, tell me that?" She's like, "She is absolutely horrified of you. She's afraid you're gonna like rip her head off or something." <laughs> She's like, "You are so scary when you are on stage." I'm like, I I think I said to her, you know, it was like. I am a giant teddy bear in real life that's on stage and off stage DJ are two completely different things. I was like, tell her yes. to come over and say hi. So she she kind of finally convinced her friend to come over and I talked to her and signed some stuff. And she, you know, it was awesome. But at the same time, I got, th- you know, I never had really thought about that until that point about people, how people view me on stage and just... On stage, I'm just like, I want everybody to jump when I say jump, you know, get the fuck up, you know, scream and holler, and yeah. and people would do it. And on stage, I'm just like, hey, <laughs> how you doing? How you, how are you guys? You guys enjoy the show, you know? Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's it's like watching a movie, and when an actor is really good at being a jerk, you know, you just God, they're probably just like that, you know? <laughs> like I have this irrational hate for. Matt Damon. I cannot stand Matt Damon. And 
I know it all comes from the movie School Ties, where they just treated Brendan oh. Fraser like trash. Such a you know? good like, movie. I have not seen that yeah, in forever. <laughs> I just feel like that's Matt Damon in real life. He was himself in that movie. First impressions <laughs> right there. That's one of those yeah. negative first impressions. That, you know, I, uh, you, and it's weird, though, how people do think, you know, something like that relates. I mean, I, I've, I'm a huge, uh, you know, Friday the 13th fan. That's one of my favorite franchises, and I'm a big fan of Kane Hodder. But it's like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I know from a personal, you know, viewpoint, I would think, you know, and Hatchet as well as another series I love that, you know, he was a part of. And it's like, but I don't, I wouldn't meet Kane Hodder and be like, that dude killed all those people and he was, you know. It's right. just, but I think pe- <laughs> some people do have trouble discerning reality from fiction sometimes, I think, you know. Yes. Like, if you've done something in a movie, like, oh, you know, I'm just playing a part. It's not like I actually think those things. Like, you know, I was such a bully and night of something strange that people thought I was, like, unapproachable at some points, you know. And, you know, they would actually come up and talk to me, and I'd be, like, the nicest person. Like, and they're like, why, how did you play such a mean character? Like, you're not like that. And it's just like... Well, I've been bullied before, and I know what that feels like, and, you know, I just relived being my bullies for once and made the other character me, you know? It's just like, you know, you just pull out the emotion that you get from parts of your life and just, you know, use that, and that's you on screen. Your muse becomes an outlet for all those things. You know, maybe it's something negative or positive or whatever. But uh, you're create, you know, you're create whatever you're using as, as your muse is. That's that's how you get that stuff out in a positive manner, as I always said. Mm-hmm. I said I'm so glad I had music because that got so much negativity out of my system in a healthy way, you know. And I right. and I always thought that was that's I I've always been a fan of aggressive music, you know. I'm a metalhead. I I've always been, but I love all types of music. But but mm-hmm. for me that was why I was always attracted to it because it was just so angry, but it felt like a, a positive way to get anger out or deal with stuff or and you know and not go out and hurt somebody or be a dick you know right yeah so and I I agree completely. and I think I can see where acting would be the same way you get to maybe you get to absorb those personas and get that negative aspect out or whatever you know. Something you would never mm-hmm. do in real life, per se. Yeah. There's, I mean, in a way, it's just like gaming, you know? People get on Call of Duty or something just to feel the thrill of it, you know, of, like, getting the anger out, getting, like, awesome one-shot kills, you know, quick scoping, headshots, you know, just to feel that sense of, like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm better than a lot of people, you know? And you you would never have those thoughts in real life, like... I just want to show them I'm good in the game, right. you know. Unfortunately, some people do draw or pass that line, you know. Unfortunately, like the Madden that event is, and things like that. that but nuts, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, and I mean, like, it's just a sad state when, you know, people can't get together doing what they love and not have to worry about situations like that. But that's a different story. Yeah, that's a whole <laughs> different topic we won't get into. Yeah. But, um, you know, b- we're we're already getting close to an hour, and I did want I do want to talk to you a little bit about. So you know, obviously, movies are a big part of your life. What are some of your favorite films? Oh well, my <laughs> it's it's You're obviously a big Wizard um, of Oz fan because of your situation with the broken yes. femur and. <laughs> Right. So, uh, yeah, I love Wizard of Oz. Um, my favorite movie of all time is Terminator 2. Good movie. Um, <laughs> and um, I really like the movie Rolling Thunder. Uh, that's probably my favorite revenge film. Um, trying to think. Uh, the Crow. I like The Crow. Oh, I love the Crow. Um, I love the Crow. I am really conflicted about that being remade. I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> I'm, I was so glad to hear that it was not being remade. That's the last thing I heard about it. Like, Momoa and um, the director both backed yeah. out. So I, I think at this point it should be done. But it, it's, <laughs> that's one of those things, though. It's been, like, years, and we keep hearing talk about it getting remade. Mm-hmm. And it's like, please, I feel please like just they, leave it alone because 
to me, that yeah. movie, again, I bring up the, it's perfect in its imperfections. Like, the mm. the little quirky things about that movie are what make it so awesome and so endearing and so long-lasting. Yeah. And I feel like they're just, they would try to be self-aware of it and ruin it, you know, in a remake. It's, I just, I, I think you should leave those kinds of things the, the way they are and, you know, let the newer generations rediscover the classics. Yeah. I mean, there there are movies I feel like are ripe for remakes, and then there are movies I there's just like there's just films to me you don't remake ever, ever, ever. You know, Jaw J- yeah. the original Jaws, please don't ever, ever remake that. You know, there unless you're a parody like how yes, <laughs> right, but I'm saying you know exactly right. A parody is one thing, but I'm saying a full on right, it's like right. please don't ever remake that movie. You know, you can pay a yeah, mod I mean, to do it no, all you want. Just don't remake it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's there's really no point. Because, to me, that is... I don't find too many movies that I feel like are perfect movies, but there are a few. And, you know, mm-hmm. I... Uh, there was actually two last year that I absolutely adored, and I'm, I'm curious if you've seen either one, but was... Uh, the Shape of Water and uh, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. I'm such a bad movie goer. <laughs> I did not see either one of those, and I know I need to. Um, I had I actually own Shape of Water. I just haven't gotten around to seeing it. Um, most of the stuff that I watch is either at film festivals or things that are maybe like a year old. Um, oh, I'm terrible usually at keeping up with anything yeah. newer coming out. I'm always a year behind on stuff, but I happen to yeah. catch both of those fairly, you know, fairly close to when they actually came out. And uh, on, on you know, they came out for like rent. I happen to rent them. And I, I was, mm-hmm. I don't get blown away by films too often because I do watch an asinine amount of films. I don't watch TV. Outside of oh yeah, you know, me outside of I watch hockey and football, and besides that, I really don't watch TV very often unless I come home and watch Ancient Aliens. But that's like a guilty pleasure thing. <laughs> I I'm currently watching that on Amazon Prime actually. <laughs> so Ancient Aliens is just one of I those that I stuff. you know constantly click on. But uh, you know oh, you know yeah. so my thing is when I want to relax at the end of the night, I because you know I do the podcast, I write. Um, do personal life stuff, my work, and uh, you know mm-hmm. I don't I don't have a lot of free time. So like I try to I try to work in my free time as in do I want to just sit here and watch TV? Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I don't want to sit there and just watch nothing for two or three hours. I want to watch a movie or or yeah, or it's... play you know or get on and I'll game for an hour or two, but. You know, that's that's my thing, is trying to find a, a happy medium balance between everything that I enjoy doing. Yeah, and the, the thing with TV shows for me is they're too long these days. Like, you'll get, like, an eight-season show, and it's just like, how do you keep up with that? And how do you deal with the stress of not seeing it for, like, the resolution to your story for either the season break <laughs> or even eight years. Sometimes they just drag it out way I, too uh, long. I'm currently going through my Game of Thrones withdrawals because that is one exactly. show that I do keep up with. And uh, I watched the first season of that. They killed everybody I cared about, and I was like, I'll watch it at some point when it's all well, finished. don't worry, because everybody else you're going to like is going to die too. So it's I'm just, sure. <laughs> it's not a pleasant show, but, is, but is there's yes. something about it. Um most of the time, if I do end up watching a TV series, it's usually on Netflix, and I either wait till they're like five seasons in, or, but I do like yeah, I so do like the catch up. I do like the trend of a lot of the newer shows are like twenty or thirty minutes long, and they're shorter and they're oh, like yeah, ten yeah, episode yeah. seasons. So yeah, I just watched Disenchantment, exactly. you know, because I had some time, and mm. it was only like three hours long the whole series. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a lot more manageable. So. I can't do the 25-episode, hour-long episode seasons. It's just too much of a time investment for me personally. Yeah, I mean, the um, I would say the ones that I can watch are Twin Peaks and Carnival and uh, Millennium. 
I'll watch those, and I'll re- I would rather re- rewatch those instead of watching something new on yeah, TV. I did that with X Files a few years ago. I went back and like rewatched mm-hmm. all of the X Files. Which let me tell you, that's a lot of TV. <laughs> it is, yeah. How many? That's like nine seasons, I think, or something well, like that. Well, the two newer ones, I think it's eleven. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I the, but they the original, it. yeah, and there's twenty episodes ish a season, so yeah, you know, that's that's my only. I guess the only TV show I watch still on the regular, and it's not really a TV show. It is and it isn't. It's Mystery Science Theater 3000. So, you know, oh, I'm yeah. a huge, huge <laughs> fan of that. And I do, that's like my, when I go to bed, I throw on an episode and fall asleep to it. So I never actually really watch a whole episode. <laughs> right. But I've watched them all several times, just in various parts. So... Yeah, the, um, they actually have a Twitch channel where all of it plays 24-7. Oh, nice. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. And um, I recently just went to see uh, Space Mutiny, oh. um, Rift Tracks nice. um, at AMC and uh, Crawl. They, they did both of those over those last yeah, couple I months. Yeah, I just see them advertising them doing the Crawl Live. I, I got some... That I got fun. to meet uh, Dr. Forrester and TV's Frank a few years ago, and, and some of the most generally nice people I have ever met. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, get, I think they both came to ScareCon one year in Syracuse, and I met them once. Um, yeah, they're, they're they, awesome. They stood there. The, I happened to be at the con that I went to where it happened to be really slow the day that I went. So I, I mm-hmm. went up, and I was like, I don't get starstruck too often, like, I mean, I've hung out with some, you know, people over the years, and it's like, I don't get, like, that just, like, holy crap thing too often, but I'm just standing there, yeah. and I'm like, dude, that's my buddy that was with me, I'm like, that's Dr. Forrester and TV's Frank, and he's like, <laughs> go over to us, like, I can't, he's like, what do you mean you yeah. can't, he's like, you can go up to anybody and talk to him, I'm like, no, that's Dr. Forrester and TV's Frank. He's like, dude, I'm dragging you over. You're going to go say <laughs> hi to him. And I just, I felt like a 12-year-old girl at an NSYNC concert, but that's really date my age, you know? But it's just like, holy crap. It's like, you guys just, uh, you know, like, you're, you guys meant, mean so much to me from what you did, you know, that it just, th- that was my mm-hmm. go-to. That's always been my go-to for a long time. Whenever I'm feeling bummed out and stuff, I throw Mystery Science Theater on. So it's almost like a, you know, like a, a comfy blanket. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> type thing, you know, that sort of. So it was just, yeah, it was a big deal, and it was really weird. And I just, I, I don't think I've ever felt like that starstruck since then. But that moment was like, holy cow! So. Yeah, I think I would feel that way if I ever met Arnold Schwarzenegger, because uh, yes. I love every single one of his movies. I don't care if they're bad. I'll, I love My them all. Arnold Schwarzenegger VHS collection is almost complete. I'm only missing like two or oh, three nice. movies right now. So I'm also a huge Arnold fan. I just watched for the first time the movie Raw Deal, which I had never seen. I have that on VHS, but my VHS player is uh, broken, so I haven't watched yeah, it. <laughs> I I got out of VHS for a long time, and then I just recently, in the last few years, have started collecting it, and I think I have about 500 VHS movies now. Uh, and, awesome. and I bought some VHS, you know, uh, VCRs at yard sales and flea markets and whatever, so I have, like, three, so in case something happens, I have a backup. <laughs> Yeah, for um, actually for a short time, uh, I used to do VHS distribution with um, my friends David Royal and Andrew Peters under um, Night Force Video. We only released like three or four, um, but we did the the Taint, Kung Fury, um, the Seventh Day, and Isles of Mutantis, um, and I, I was a huge fan of watching stuff on VHS, but. Uh, Lately, I just, you know, started dwindling and my tape player broke, so I just haven't been watching anything. I put all my collection in storage, you know, and just, Oh, I can understand. I take up so much room. Like, I'm getting to the point now where I'm going to have to start bending some of my movies and just putting, like, a little tag on the top of them with what is in it and 
because I have right. so many I can't keep them all in my office. And it's like I'm mm-hmm. probably never going to get to half the ones I've bought. But it, for me, it's like a treasure hunt. Every time I go out and find oh, them, yeah. it's like, holy crap, I haven't seen this movie in 20 years, so I'm going to buy it for a quarter type deal. You know, that's yep. part of the fun, and it's it's a nostalgic treasure hunt. Because there's a lot of it stuff I watched yeah, I as a kid that I loved, you know. Yeah, I love going to like Goodwill or uh, any type of thrift store and just seeing what they have. Sometimes you find some really cool like SOV stuff, and um, it's it's an awesome little oh, hunt for sure. But we are getting close to that time where I need to wrap everything up. Sure. Um, so uh, before we before we end it with. You know, uh, I do want to make sure everybody goes and checks out my sponsors, the Maine Cannababes. Go to www.maincannababes.com. There's all kinds of cool information about cannabis legislation, facts, different charities they are working on. You can meet this year's Calendar Girls, pre-order a 2019 calendar, and find out about events and other things that they are up to. Again, that's www.maincannababes.com. So thank you for being on. And is there any place that, or anything you want to plug before we wrap things up? Uh, sh- sure. Um, I, House Shark, um, SRSCinema.com. Uh, you can find it at Walmart for about $9.99. And um, uh, johnnyzmovie.com which is the, the newest release that we'll be having up uh, probably uh, sometime next year and um, on Twitch at actor Michael Merchant and that's about it alright well thank, thank you very much for coming on I, I really appreciate it yeah and of course it, anytime and it was good to you I definitely when Johnny Z comes out get back a hold of me and let me know when you're ready and we will uh, we'll chat again and catch up Sure, sounds great. Thanks, TJ. Hey, no problem. Remember, kids, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one, and I will see you sexy animals on the flip side. It's intermission. Rise and stretch time. Time to refresh yourself and visit our snack bar. Got a yen for hot popcorn? Your favorite soft drinks are sparkling cold. The juicy Frank sizzling hot. There's delicious coffee freshly brewed. And all kinds of ice cream and candy to tempt you. Showtime will be announced loud and clear to get you back to your car in time. So stretch your legs. Come to the snack bar now. Thanks for listening to Average Joe's Drive In. If you'd like to talk movies or contact the show, add our social media pages. You can add us on Facebook at Average Joe's Drive In Podcast, on Twitter, at TWJ Author, on Instagram, at Thomas Washburn Jr. You can also hit up www.thomaswashburnjr.com for more information about the show and related links. If you'd like to support the show, you can buy TJ's books on Amazon. Just type in Thomas Washburn Jr. in the search. Books are available in Kindle and paperback formats. If you have Kindle Unlimited or Prime, you can read the books for free and money will be earned by the pages read. It doesn't cost you anything and it supports the show. Until next time, you've been listening to Average Joe's Drive-In.